Hello everyone, so I'm going to start Carolina week off today with my look at the Panthers of the NFL. I'm going to save the Carolina Hurricanes of the NHL and the Charlotte Hornets of the NBA. I'm going to save those two uh, for tomorrow and Saturday because free agency is uh, in full swing with the, both of those leagues. So things could happen in the next 24 to 48 hours with uh, both of those teams. So we're going to save those till tomorrow and Saturday. But I'm going to look at the Panthers today of the NFL. Uh, last year they won the NFC South, which is a very easy division to win. A 500 record the last couple of years has been able to win that division. Uh, they did with a 7-8-1 record. The Saints went 7-9. and nine. Um, So very uh, close um, that the Saints almost were able to win this division, which is kind of sad that they almost won it with a 7-9 and nine record. Panthers won at 7-8-1 and one record. Uh, Falcons went 6-10. and 10. And obviously the Bucks, the worst team in the league, had a 2-14 and 14 record. So I think it is kind of a three-team division. I think the Falcons have got a little bit better. I think the Saints have got a lot better. And I think the Panthers have, uh, have a very competitive roster and can compete again in this division. I think it will come down to uh, Panthers or Saints again uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the season. But we'll see what happens. I think they drafted well. Looking at the draft first, uh, 25th overall pick, they picked uh, Shaq Thompson, who's an outside linebacker out of Washington. I think if you pair him with Kukli and Davis, you have a great linebacking core, arguably one of the best linebacking cores in the league, depending on how well Thompson does play. It's not like he was a top 10 pick, but still a first rounder and will have an impact on this team for sure. Uh, Devin Funches is who they drafted with their second round pick, 41st overall, so a high second round pick. He's a wide receiver out of Michigan. Uh, gives Cam Newton another weapon. I think they got uh, Benjamin at the wide receiver position, Olsen at the tight end position, uh, and uh, Cautry's a great veteran receiver on this team as well. I think Cam Newton now has a lot of weapons, um, and Benjamin's still young as well, so very, two very young receivers. Greg Olsen's a good veteran tight end who can be a thousand year to receiving tight end as he was last year. So I think the the receiving core is going to be pretty solid for this team as well. Uh, fourth round pick for them, uh, Daryl Williams is an awesome offensive guard out of Oklahoma. And then they had two fifth round picks, the 169th and 174th. Uh, so we'll see what happens with these guys here. They did draft uh, David Mayo, a linebacker out of Texas State, with that first uh, first pick in the fifth round. And then the last pick they had, uh, they only had five overall, so the last pick they had, uh, they drafted running back uh, Artis Payne out of Auburn. So we'll see if, if uh, he gets any playing time and can crack the roster. I think their running back position is pretty solid with John Stewart at the running back position, um, as well as Cam Newton still being able to um, get some yards with his legs. Uh, I think he's a little a little safer with his uh, run decisions, and when he does decide to run the ball and take off, I think he's a little smarter, a little safer than guys like RG3. I think uh, you know or get into his situations that are a little more prone to getting into an injury situation and getting hurt. I think Cam Newton's a little smarter than that. And uh, we'll throw the ball away and we'll slide um, when he needs to. So I think I think this is a solid team. Um, I think they benefit from playing in a weak division um, for sure. Um, like I said, a 500 win season could can can win this division. I'm not sure if that's going to be the case this year. I think, like I said, the Saints have gotten much better. I think the Falcons are a solid team as well. The Bucks, you know, give them a few years and then they could be be, be uh, competing in this division as well. So it might require you know a nine or ten win season to win this division this year. But we'll see what happens as the season starts and gets going. Uh, looking at the offense first, I'll start off with Cam Newton. Um, he only played in 14 games last year, so he missed a couple games. Uh, 58.5 completion percent percentage is a little low um the elite quarterbacks and really good quarterbacks do have it at 66 percent and i think that's where um cam newton should be at i think he can be a top 10 quarterback in this league um and i think he has the ability to do that and i think he can get that 58.5 completion percentage up especially um you know developing developing some more rapport and chemistry with benjamin is going to help with that um bring Funches in if they can get on a good good working page and get good chemistry going right off the back with him. Um, I think this team can, can get better, and I think he'll get better as well. It's building that chemistry that's going to increase that um, completion percentage because they're going to be on the same page more often. Uh, just over 3,000 passing yards for him, 18 touchdowns um, to uh, 12 interceptions. So, you know, one and a half to one ratio. Uh, won a little bit more than that. I think Cam Newton can be a 20 plus touchdown guy. I think he can also get those interceptions down to under 10 for sure. Um, 38 sacks last year. Um, you know, how much of that again is 
him getting out of the pocket, how much of that's the offensive line fault. It's tough to determine that that statistic when you have a quarterback who can run. Um, he had 539 rush yards on 103 rushing attempts, so he you know he averages about five yards every time he does decide to run the ball. So that's a solid option as well with the quarterback position. But you do have a solid running back uh, in John Stewart who missed three games last year. 175 rushing attempts for him for 809 yards. He also had 25 receptions for 181 yards, so he can be another option out of the backfield that can get you some yards with his hands as well. But uh, I think if he plays a full season and could get 200 rushing attempts, I think he has the ability to be a thousand yard rusher for this team. It's just whether or not he gets that those opportunities and gets those rushing attempts. He only had 175 last year, uh, and even over the course of 13 games, it's still only about you know 12 a game or so. So um, we'll see what happens again with the receiving core that they have. Um, you might not see too much too much run play um, because of that receiving core. You're going to want to take advantage of having two young receivers in Benjamin and Funchess. Uh, Benjamin last year, 73 receptions for 1,008 yards and nine touchdowns, so that's fantastic. Uh, when you got a veteran like Greg Olson as well, who had 84 receptions for 1,008 yards um, and six touchdowns, you're going to take advantage of that for sure, um, and you're going to throw the ball um, as often as you can to those guys. Uh, Jericho Cotri, again, a great veteran on the team, 48 receptions for 580 yards. So you have those weapons that you're going to throw the ball, um, but I think it can be a little more balanced. I think Stewart, like I said, can be a 1,000-yard rusher given the opportunity. So I think if you look at, let's say, 50 offensive planes a game, which is you know a, a great goal to get to, um, if 30 passes, 20 rushes, I think that that's a little more um, balanced, and I think that's kind of the direction the Panthers could go with with their offense. Um, obviously, their offense can score a ton, but if their defense doesn't step up, then it doesn't matter how many points they score, how many touchdowns they get, and how many receptions uh, you know Cam, Cam Newton has. He can have a 70% completion percentage. It doesn't matter if the defense doesn't stop the uh, opposition. So looking at the defense, I'm going to start with the linebackers first because, like I said, I think that's where the strength is for this team. Um, Shaq Thompson coming in, 25th overall pick. Uh, Davis had 100 combined tackles last year with two and a half sacks and three pass deflections. Uh, Tresnick, who's a veteran they've brought in from Miami, had 48 tackles with a couple pass deflections last year. Uh, Klein, who's another outside linebacker, had 39 combined tackles. But obviously the main man on the defensive side of the ball for the Panthers is Kukli, who had 153 combined tackles, three sacks, and 12 pass deflections for this team last year. And I don't see that slowing down. I think he can be another 150-plus tackle person. I think he could get up to maybe even five sacks a season. He's almost averaging a pass deflection a game. Um, you know, that's a solid guy to have in the middle of middle of your field. And like I said, successful teams, you want your leading tackle people, your, legal, your leading tacklers to be in the linebacking position. If your leading tackler is a cornerback or a strong safety, way too many plays are getting to the second and third level. Um, if, and if it ends up being a defensive lineman, that's that's great as well. But you don't want it to be your DBs because, um, in my opinion, that means there's way too many plays getting to the second and third level. And you can't have that. You're not going to have a very successful season if that ends up happening. So that's the linebacking core. I think very, very solid. Uh, looking at the DBs, um, obviously Harper, Great veteran for this team. Um, you know, I, I love the guy because he played for the Saints for years, and I think he's a great guy for this team to have. 62 combined tackles with 10 pass deflections and four picks for him last year. Um, so even as a veteran, he can still produce. He's not slowing down at all for this team. Uh, Norman and White are a couple of cornerbacks I'll talk about. Norman had 45 tackles with 11 pass deflections and a couple picks, and White had 36 tackles with six pass deflections and an interception as well. So very solid backfield for this team. Um, when you look at those three guys that I've just mentioned, 28 combined pass deflections and seven combined interceptions, that's all. That's a very solid backfield. Um, you know, Coleman, who played with the Chiefs last year, and Tillman, who they've brought in as a veteran. Um, looking back at 2012 for Tillman, he had 86 tackles with 16 pass deflections and three picks with the Bears. Obviously, been a little injury prone the last couple seasons, but that 2012 season is only a couple removed. I'm not sure if he can play at that level again with the injury prone seasons he've had the last couple of years, but I think he can still have an impact on this team. And Coleman, uh, coming over from the Chiefs, had 37 combined tackles with six, pack, six pass deflections and three picks last year. So I think they've got a solid backfield. they got some veterans, they got some young guys, and um, they're going to be able to compete and stop the receivers that the Saints and the Falcons are going to throw at them um, this upcoming year. Uh, looking at the defensive line to finish off, we got um, uh, L Lotu Lele. Uh, who had uh, two sacks last year, 26 tackles. Short, 39 tackles with three and a half sacks and a couple pass deflections. Uh, Johnson was their leading sack getter on the team with eight and a half sacks and 41 tackles. Uh, Horton had uh, 26 tackles and three sacks with a pass deflection. 
Uh, Ely and Edwards both had four sacks, uh, respectively, for those two guys. And Addison chipped in with six and a half sacks and 23 tackles as well. So I think I think they got a solid defensive line. Um, they didn't have a you know a 10 plus sack kind of a player, um, but obviously their linebackers can get to the quarterback as well with you know having you know three and a half four sacks among those guys kind of thing. I think um, you know I th- I think Johnson has the ability to be a 10 plus sack player. I think Addison could be a 10 plus sack player. Um, as long as they can find a way to get to the quarterback, that's great. And and whether or not you have a lot of sacks, I think it's just if you get pressure on him and you force him to get the ball out early and make mistakes, it's going to lead to interceptions because you got DBs that can get to the ball and you got linebackers that can cover a lot of ground and are going to get some good tackles. So I think the Panthers are a solid team. I think they're going to compete in the NFC South with the Saints. Um, I think it's going to require more than a 7-8-1 record to win the division again this year. Like I said, maybe a 9 or 10 win season is what it's going to take. But it's a solid team here. And going in the right direction going forward with Kukli at the linebacker position and Cam Newton uh, controlling the offense at the quarterback position. Thank you again all for watching and listening. You can follow me on Twitter at GHAM614. I'll be continuing Carolina Week tomorrow with my look at the Hornets, the Charlotte Hornets of the NBA. Thanks again. Bye-bye.